Hello and welcome back to another video. So today's video is gonna be a little different. I am asking a question. Should Watchtower be blamed for all the problems that we have today? So in recent weeks, there's been a major scandal in the ex Jehovah's Witness community. And we know, we don't have to get into it, we know what it's about. Well, at the heart of the matter, a man has said that all of his actions that he's done, all the bad decisions that he has made is a direct result of Watchtower. It's not his fault. He's not taking responsibility or ownership of it. He has not apologized or acknowledged his problem. He has blamed it all on Watchtower, that, that he was sexually repressed, that he had gone through a difficult time period. Therefore, it's not his fault what happened to him. So that has got me thinking the last couple of weeks. And I didn't want to rush out and make a video right away in response. I wanted to think about it to make something that was just more attack video or defending. Because again, I'm not an angry person anymore. I don't really care either way. Um, I think what happened was horrible and disgusting, but I'm not going to judge anybody morally for what they do. That's not my position. I'm no longer an elder. But I had me thinking about the situation. Can all of our problems be blamed on Watchtower? Well, let's get into it in today's video. So, has Watchtower abused us? The answer is 100% without a doubt, yes. They have abused us. They have abused us mentally, emotionally, psychologically, and monetarily. For instance, I could talk hours about it. We could do a whole series of videos about the fear, obligation, and guilt that Watchtower put upon us that we never were doing enough. No matter how much you did for the organization, it was never enough. It didn't matter if you're a pioneer or an elder or a Bethelite or a special pioneer or a circuit overseer, you were not doing enough. That obligation that you had to do more. I can remember every circuit overseer's visit from the time I was like five years old until I was 38, my last one, they never said, hey, great job, keep up the good work, we'll see you in six months. They always find ways to say, you have to work on this, you have to. One circuit overseer, um, he said, you have the highest of all 22 congregations in the circuit, you place the most magazines, but your Bible studies are the worst. You're wasting the magazines, what's the problem here? We've had circuit overseers who would say, hey, your Sunday meeting attendance is 100%, your Tuesday's at 90, but why is your Bible study, your book study, we used to have that years ago. Why is it at 60%? You guys aren't doing a great job. So that was the thing that we had. Even today, I'm still affected by that idea that I feel like I'm wasting time. I should be doing something different. I should be making more videos or more activism. It's from that upgrading that Watchtower put upon me. As you can see behind me, I love playing video games. I still feel bad playing video games because my watchtower brain thinking that that's a waste of time. Watching TV, reading books is a waste of time. So it still is a part of me, even though I've been awake and out for six years, even though I don't believe any of it anymore. Um, I still wake up at six in the morning. I gotta get up, I gotta do something. So watchtower has abused us. Watchtower has messed up our brains in some ways, including me. But does that give me license to do anything? Does that mean nothing that I do is not my fault? Well, the answer to that is no, sadly. So let's go into it. Let's get into sexual repression again. Excuse me. So was I sexually repressed as a Jehovah's Witness? Yes, 100%. My grandparents were witnesses. My father was a witness. Uh, my great-grandmother was a Jehovah's Witness. All my area, I had no worldly friends. All my relatives who were not witnesses, we never talked to them. They were dead. Um, so growing up, I was like any other human person. Man, I was horny. I had urges. Um, as a teenager, I can remember praying to Jehovah over and over again. Please take this away from me. Please. I noticed girls right away. There was no doubt if I was cis or gay or bi. I knew right away who I was. Um, I met my wife when I was 10. She was my sister's best friend. And when I was about 14, I decided to have, started to have feelings for her. But I didn't know if that was love or hormones or what. But if I could go back and I wasn't Jehovah's Witness, I probably would have had sex with her if she would have said it was okay. Um, 
But the thing is, even as a teenager, even on these wild, crazy hormones, I was the master of my penis. I didn't act on those on those desires. I was baptized at 12. I was became the literature assistant um, at like 15. I did territories, you know, auxiliary pioneered. I was, in, there'd be 40 sisters out in service on the Wednesday in the middle of the summer, no brothers. I would take the group out for 40 sisters. So I had a little bit of authority as a teenager. I never used that. I never abused that. I never sexted any woman. I never um, flirted with a sister. I never glared at them or like be creepy because as a Jehovah's Witness, I always valued women. I And today I do the same thing. I never thought I was they were beneath me or I was better than them because I have a penis. I'm just a, guys aren't any better. I, the whole headship, I always thought it was stupid. So um, growing up, I had these urges, but I didn't act on them. You know, at the time I thought Jehovah was helping me, but now I realize it was the culture, society pressures keeping me from doing those things. So, you know, I asked my wife out when I was 18 for on a date and she said I was too young. And when I was 19, she asked me out uh, to, we dated for about two months. Yeah, maybe three months, two and a half months. It was like January. Then we, I proposed to her April 7th of 97. Um, we got married August 23rd, 97. So it's almost 25 years of marriage. And in that time period, you know, we waited to our wedding night to have sex. And that was, we were both virgins and it was awkward. We didn't know what we were doing. Nobody told us what to do. It was such a weird thing to do. And we've had hangups, both of us. We could not enjoy a simple, beautiful thing as sex because of the sexual repression. Um, it, 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 uh, went, going to Pioneer School also messed with us because they wanted some, some weird things at Pioneer School about acts between married couples that I don't want to get into. It's none of anybody's business, including Watchtower or my own. Um, so growing up, you know, as an adult, um, I was married 19 years as a Jehovah's Witness, never became a ministerial servant, an elder, never used that power to hurt other women or get favors other women. I was always careful because I respected them, respected my wife. So, you know, my wife woke up first uh, almost seven years ago in the summer of 2015. It took me six more months to get out. Um, now I don't believe in God. I don't believe in the morality of the Bible. What's preventing me from having sex with women right now? Because I don't need that in my life. I have complete control over my domain. I have mastery of my penis. Um, and also, I respect and love my wife. I don't want to hurt her. Why would I want to hurt her? Now, am I better than anybody else who had premarital sex or got a divorce? No. Again, I'm not judging anybody. I am not saying that I'm morally better than anybody else. Because I don't care if you're bi, straight, trans, uh, live in a polygamous marriage or polyamorous. I don't care. It doesn't bother me. What bothers me is breaking the law, hurting kids, and taking advantage of sex workers who sometimes have no control over the situation. So just because we were sexually repressed does not give us the license to go out and do th some things. It's not okay. We can't use that as an example to say, oh, I can do whatever I want, it's not my fault. No, we're still adults. We still have control over our thoughts and actions. So let's get into another issue that Watchtower really abused me. And now you, maybe you didn't have this problem, I did. So we're gonna get into financial abuse. So I was financially repressed. I don't know how to say that word correctly. So growing up, my father had a successful business. He could have made more money, but he always told me, don't worry about debt. Don't worry about retirement. Don't worry about savings. Armageddon's going to come. Don't worry about education. So as a young person, I knew I was going to go to college. I decided to go to vocational school or technical school during high school to get a printing degree. Because at the time I was about five years old, all I wanted to do in life was go to Brooklyn Bethel and run a printing press, make the Bibles, go to Walt Kill, print the magazines. When I was five years old, we had constantly had uh, Bethelites visit our house and a Bethelite took us a rejected Bible that was assembled but it wasn't stitched gave it to me and I took it apart and I was just blown away how this could be made so I was like excited this is what I wanted to do with my life so I talked to my parents they were okay with it I went to uh, Votech and learned how to print and uh, I was one of those students who took the printing really well my teacher loved me and I picked it up really quickly um, my teacher said he was going to retire, but he waited until 
I graduated in 95 before he retired. So I graduated with a degree in printing. You know, I applied for Bethel at 19. I didn't get accepted. And that's going to be a different video at a different time period why I didn't get accepted to Bethel. But I had this knowledge of printing, so I got a job. I had a couple smaller jobs in printing. Um, in 1999, January 99, my printing company went bankrupt, went out of business. Uh, so, you know, I was out of a job. I found another printing job six weeks later, started March 2nd in 99. So in about two weeks, less than that, I'll be at this company 23 years. So in those 23 years, I had never missed a paycheck. I always had at least 40 hours of work, always had overtime, benefits. So why am I not better financially off off right now? I don't have any crippling addictions of drugs or alcohol. My kids, my wife and I haven't had majorly bills of medical bills. What prevented me from being in a better position financially? It's all due to Watchtower. So going back to my father, um, again, when I turned 18, he told me to take a credit card out. He actually helped apply for a credit card. He said, use this, charge this up. This is a good thing. Um, you need to use this for a credit card uh, to make credit. Don't worry about the debt. Don't worry about that. You can pay it off later. So at 18 years old, I started using that credit card a lot, too much. In fact, when I got married at 20, I think I had two or three thousand dollars in credit card debt at 20. So I had no savings, not a penny to my name when we got married, and debt, which is like tying your shoes together and trying to walk or run. It's so stupid. So our marriage life, we both regular pioneering. We both struggled with this problem. We both used the trauma of Watchtower to ease our, our, our pain by shop therapy, realtor therapy. I know it's a real thing. So we bought so much stuff to like make us feel better because we were being victims of abuse. Plus I also, uh, plus I also had, uh, I gave a lot of money to Watchtower. I gave more time, but I gave them 10, 20, $30 every single week. You know, $50, you know, conventions, I would give a couple hundred dollars. Memorial, I would give money. So I donated thousands upon thousands of dollars to Watchtower. I also turned down overtime. I turned down a promotion because it would be on a second shift. I could have made a couple dollars more an hour, but I should be so much farther off in our life. Uh, my wife went to nursing school in 2004 she graduated in 2005. Um, she worked part-time. She was regular pioneering. She 18 years of regular pioneering. Uh, in 2007 or eight, she was offered a full-time job at like 50,000 a year, like 13, 14 or 15 years ago. She turned it down. I told, yeah, we pray to Jehovah. Jehovah, we won't need this money. Well, we should have done that. Um, plus you have to leave, you have to use certain standards in a watchtower. Um, even they say be poor, humble, and that's a bunch of bull. And you know, there's this th idea that in many halls that I was in, uh, brothers would get made fun of. They only had a couple suits. With sisters would get made fun of. Um, I'm built like a fire hydrant. I'm short, I'm round, and I can't go to the thrift store and find a suit to fit me. I would always have to get the suits altered or tailored to fit me. They're hundreds of dollars. And they would wear out. I would bust pants out and out in service, which was a very embarrassing thing to do. Uh, so we, I used a credit card debt. I did. I charged that stuff. We did unassigned territory for like six years straight when I was in my 30s. And that cost money. Assemblies cost money. Um, when the, the shift came from print to digital, I went out and bought an iPad. Then I got an iPad for my wife and my kids. And then a year later, the new iPad came out. I bought four new iPads. And I gave my iPads to my parents and there are my kids' iPads to my sister, my brother-in-law at Bethel. And I thought it was doing a good thing and this is fine, there's nothing wrong with that. And so it was just one thing after another. Um, and I was just putting it off. I wasn't saving a retirement. I had like next to nothing saved. I had so much debt. So it got to the point where in 2016, six years ago, we were $100,000 in debt, like 93,000. And that's not including our house payment. That was just credit card debt, medical bills, personal loans, student loans, and car payments. Because even though my wife had graduated for 11 years, we hadn't paid off for student loan yet. So my wife in February of 2016 got a full-time job for the first time. And um, I stopped donating money to Watchtower, of course. And uh, I started working more overtime. We just care, we just focus on our debt. So what happened? What well, took us five years, 11 months, last, last month, January, 
every, all personal loans are paid off, our credit cards are paid off, our medical bills are paid off. Um, I paid off three car payments in that six years. My wife bought a new car. We owe like 14,000 on her car. So we're almost out of debt. I have retirement money saved for the first time in my life because I am realistic now. Now, some Jehovah's Witness apologist is, is gonna watch this and say, no, no, Martin, you're exaggerating. Oh, no, no, no. I knew, I was there, you know. Um, how many examples would we have in videos or assemblies where a sister quit her job because she could pioneer and Jehovah miraculously provided for her? And that was just the idea over and over again that we didn't have to do it ourselves, Jehovah relied. So I'm not the only one that has gone through this, this financial abuse, but yet have I used it as a crux to say, well, Watchtower owes me, I need reparations. I'm gonna sue Watchtower. And again, if you do that, that's fine. The Watchtower owes my wife for the 18 years she worked full time. She was a saleswoman. I was a salesperson. I should have gotten paid. All we were is recruiting, um, but that's not gonna happen. So I, I can't justify by going out and stealing something or by creating a Patreon and uh, saying I'm gonna make videos and then taking that money and use it for legal activities. So that's not my objective. I do not make these YouTube videos to make money or get fame or to get likes. I do it to help people because I really care about you. If it takes me two, four hours to write a video, edit it, film it, upload it, and if it just helps one person, that's worth it. I'm not starting on starting a, a Patreon because I don't care about the money. I haven't monetized this YouTube channel, but then YouTube did. So I haven't gotten a penny from this and I don't care because this is not about financial power. This is about getting back at Watchtower. So again, this is a very long and rambling video. Is Watchtower to blame for the problems that we face today? Yes, 100% without a doubt. But yet we are human beings. We can overcome these problems. We can overcome these setbacks. We can't use an excuse about them. We can use that and learn from that and become better. And I am really sorry that if your life hasn't worked out as good as mine now, but stick it in there, keep working. It it'll, it'll, should get better. And so look at the support of the other ex Jehovah's Witnesses for help. If you're having issues, talk to me. Maybe I can help you. I don't know if I can. Um, so one good thing. So what has this happened? You know, um, I did mention in other videos, my wife went back to college. Uh, she got her master's in healthcare management. She quit her nursing's job. Now she's an administrator of an assisted living facility. So she's like doubled her income in five years, six years. That also helped. So we've, we've been running this townhouse for almost six years now. We sold our house in Redline. It was, it was right next to the Kingdom Hall. And Jehovah's Witnesses kept stopping at my house. So we sold our house. We've been renting this townhouse for six years now, and we're, we're building a new house. Um, yesterday, the township uh, approved the plans. We signed the contract back in November, but it just takes so long. And uh, June 24th to July 15th is our move-in date. We have a three-week window. They're gonna start construction on the house probably next week, March 9th at the latest, and it'll be finished June to July. Um, this will be a dream, dream house for us. We've never, I can't, could not imagine having a brand new house built. When we bought our house in 2001, it was a row home downtown uh, by the Kingdom Hall. It was it was abandoned house that my dad and I and other witnesses have spent so much money and so much time. It was so bad and we fixed it up, made it look a lot nicer, but I had no money, I had nothing to save for it. And so things have worked out for us and I hope things work out for you. But don't ever use Watchtower as an excuse to hurt other people or take advantage of other people. That's the whole message of this video. And looking back at my father and my mother, then this video, I really have a lot of anger for them. They're not nice people. But yet at the same time, they have nothing to show for their life. And I know life's not about how much possessions you have. I get that. My dad will be 75 next year. He turned 74 last month. My mom will be 70. And they have nothing, nothing. My uh, step-grandfather, my grandmother's husband, my real grandfather died, my grandmother married this guy, witness, and he lived in a shack on a mountain. And when, my, when he died, my parents sold their nice house and moved in with them to pay their debt off. And it's a, it's a horrible hovel. It's, it's like, I, I can't imagine it. 
And it's just like you, my dad worked for 50, 60 years, has nothing to show for it, lives in a shack on a mountain with horrible water, sulfur water, horrible living conditions, no retirement, living on social security, and both of his, his sons are apostates. So I thought that by being a good Jehovah's Witness, things are gonna work out for you, everything was gonna be Jehovah's provide. Jehovah has not provided for him. And again, if I retire with a nice house, it doesn't make me better than my parents, but you should enjoy life when you, in, your, in your 60s and 70s. You should not suffer and struggle through it. Watchtower has destroyed my parents' health. They're both in horrible health conditions. I will probably never see them again until they die. But it's just sad. It's just really sad. And I wish better things for them. And my parents are not alone. Uh, my sister's 46 and she just married a 60 year old, year old man, uh, almost the same age as my mom, like one year younger than my mom. And uh, cause her, you know, her husband became a woman, got kicked out of wall kill. That's another story. But uh, she has nothing to show for it. She has no savings. She has nothing. And again, life's more important than money. But if you work hard, you should be rewarded later in life. So I feel sorry for my sister, um, but things aren't gonna work out for them, you know. So now, will you and I live to see the end of Watchtower? Probably not. They're gonna probably gonna go on. I really, really, really wish they would they would die before I die. But all religions on a downward tra trajectory. It might take two or three more generations, but we'll, religion will get to the breaking point when there will just not be enough money and enough support. And then all religions will, will start to fall. You know, Muslims and you know African religions will take longer, but it, it's happening in Europe. It's going to happen in the, the the West. The East is already happening, and I can't wait to that day. Again, I have nothing. I'm not angry against religions. I think it's all made up. I, my only problem with religions is the government should tax them. It's just like it's just like a club. So you can have a religion, but you can't have your own separate rules, your separate society. And that's my opinion. So I'm di digressing here. So am I attacking the man who was at the center? Nope, I stopped my Patreon, I subscribed to him because again, I don't need to listen to him. He lost all credibility and I don't need him in my life. I don't need anger hostility, but I, am I anger at him? No, why would I be? It's his life, he can do what he wants to. So again, you can do whatever you want to. I will never put my morals on you, but just don't hurt people, be nice to people. Um, one more thing before I wrap up. Uh, again, next week will be six years since I woke up, February 23rd. On uh, February 28th at 3 p.m., it's a Monday. I'm going to be, that's Eastern Standard Time. Excuse me, I'm in Pennsylvania. I live in Pennsylvania. I'm doing a live stream, my first live stream to celebrate six years free. If you have any questions for me about being an elder, Bethel, unassigned territory, um, uh, new light, I don't know, anything. My, I have 100 years family history of, of you, you want to learn about Nathan Noor? My dad was in his congregation this, in the 60s. You want to learn about Fred France? Uh, how about, uh, uh, not Gandhi, um, Genghis, Brother Genghis. I met him a couple times. Bar, I know a lot of stories. Whatever you want to know about my life, but waking up, elder process, RBC, corruption, drop a comment or question in the, this video and I will answer it or drop it in live chat uh, Monday, February 28th at 3 p.m. Eastern. Hey, thanks for watching. Have a great day and be kind to one another. Bye-bye.